here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on Thursday, the 18th of April. 2019 for everybody that's keeping score out there in Radio Land. And hey, Graham, how you doing? Working on your internet stuff, I'm sure. Staying busy, keeping the RLM afloat. And uh, we're going to say hi to the bots and the bodies hanging in the chat room tonight. We've got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Brackets DC, Anti underscore Asmo, Betsy, Chalcedony, Echelon, Free Enslaved, Graham Z, IB Don, C, Java Doctor underscore 2. Meister Brow, Rain, Rob Works, Rums, Vanna White, Weather, Dork, Phantom, and Well Then, Beetle, Hello Honey, Circle, Colfax, 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, me, Frumpy Gromit, Java Doctor underscore, eh, double dipper. J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Kiss, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Slamo. And there's the uh, entertainment for your afternoon typing extravaganza on the Real Liberty Media dot com chat. Where all the greatest thinking minds of the 20th century gather to share their infinite wisdom with each other and stuff. But mostly stuff. Yeah. Hey, right? Eh? 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 And I think I'm like 30 seconds or something, 45, ahead of the chat room. So, yeah, Moose isn't feeling so good. Send her the good vibrations and the yogurt. Yogurt and good vibrations will make you feel better. But to get that unbalanced in the first place, wow. Wonder what you ate, little missy. That didn't sound like it was tasty. Uh, okay, I'll get off Moose. but uh, We've got... Part 5 of the control games on 20% off. And every single day that I do radio, I, I keep forgetting that I'm not where I used to be, kind of, in a way, sort of. I mean, I remember it, but it's so strikingly different from where I'm at now that this is always new. Every freaking day is, I wonder what's going to happen today, day. In a little small rinky-dink little Danish town. Now, like tonight, I was at the grocery and uh, the kid had a very unique accent speaking English to me. And she says, yeah, I'm half Malaysian. <laughs> I went, oh, wow. Not, you know, Danish Malaysian or any of that kind of American crap. Just, just a half-breed. And I thought it was unique to me because I'm a mutt. Yeah, I got parents from two continents, so I know how it, you know, how it is. And now it's a lot more common than it was when I was a kid. But people are mixing rather well out there in the Boinkin world, and they're actually making some decent kids that grow up to be decent adults. It's a shame that that's not where I come from, because. Uh, Wow, the things that I read about home and the world at large, all the big cities, they're they are fighting in Copenhagen about some moron that burns the Koran for attention. And then they, they use that burning the Koran to get money to fight about it, I guess. And It's just a yo-yo. It goes back and forth. And, of course, the paper's going to make it look like thousands of people are slitting each other's throats over some stupid book. But to me, I think it's a couple hundred people just, eh. Their God's dick is bigger than your God's dick, so whip it out and let's have us fight and prove it. And everybody wins. I don't even get it anymore. What all this religious crap, it's always about fighting and property. Diddling kids. Oh, someday you get off work so you don't have to go be a slave on the Jesus Day. Shit like that. 
all part of the control games to keep us in line so we don't figure it all out. And figuring it out is so depressing because the answers are so simple. But doing them, well, that's a whole nother program, I suppose. But not the control games. What are we controlled by? What aren't we controlled by? Ooh, let us ponder that. You I mean you can't walk across the street blindly? You got to make sure the traffic's not going to run you over. So there, there's just a certain amount of being alive that doesn't require a sign on the you know on the street to tell you what you need to do. <laughs> so yes, I can actually navigate the rough, tough streets of Freddy Town on my very own without having to see signs to tell me what to do. Hmm. Wonder what that's all about. Because everywhere I've been, there's always been signs to let you know where you're at. Signs to tell you what time to go to bed. Something to tell you this and that and the other. Ah, oh, that control game goes back to the clock. And every time I disavow the clock... Cirque goes back to work, so i got to pick her up at the trade at a certain time. kind of screws up my whole <sighs> disavowing the clock stand. It doesn't go anywhere. I can't get any of you guys to join me. <laughs> Do it at all by myself. It's really difficult, you know, to stop this time shit if you fuckers won't work with me here. <laughs> no, I'm screwing around because the reality of it I think we all got a version of our own to explain what we see, right? Now, the the problem with society is some people have yet to realize the foundation of everything that they believe. Everything comes down to a misdirection to make a profit off you in a business transaction that... Well, it shouldn't really exist. Now, for a guy that's got a show called 20% Off, I suppose that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I, but I'm not for all that. I think Tesla's idea, or the way they represent it now, who knows what it was. I wasn't around in that time of history. So I got to go off what people tell me. And I heard his gift to mankind was electricity. And he built a tower that was capable of drawing electricity from the atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. But Westinghouse said, no, swine hunt, you're not going to do that shit. We're charging these monkeys. And here we are, over a hundred years later. I mean, you think the fractional reserve bank thing was one, that's one headache. But this other headache, and then after talking to Larry Woods and finding out that the electricity is delivered on an inferior uh, wavelength so that when we get it, it creates waste. That in life creates all the shit we have to deal with. And it's that simple. But we're so educated by public school, you know, and knowing which president blew who, that nobody knows anything about what really matters. They're even trying to con the public with... New studies indicate, look what we just realized about cannabis. Uh, no, instead of telling the truth and saying, we made cannabis illegal so that you wouldn't be able to use it and things kind of went south on us somehow. We lost control of the gravy train. So instead of, uh, you know, admitting they lied and, and an open apology for all the horrid shit they've done because of it. Now, now we're going to get conned into news. New research indicates. Hmm. Hey, Miss Grammy hears me. Hmm. Yeah, I've been enjoying your show. It's a little shorter, a little bit less, but uh, you're doing good stuff. I like your radio still. I listen to you most of the time, both shows, but I think maybe you missed a show because I, I usually catch you on Thursday and Saturday. And I think there was a Saturday real recent you didn't pop in, probably last week. Anyway, 
It's nice to see your name on the Real Liberty Media chat room, hanging out with all us low-life anarchist scum, because we've been called that here by, <laughs> by people that must love the state more than anything else. I'm never going to understand that. But anyway, what was I ranting on about before I got hijacked by my friend Mary? Hmm. Oh yeah, the control games on uh, part five of the control games this week. So far, I've been keeping score. I hope I do this one right. You know, because all the changes that will save us as a species, a life form, <laughs> mankind, <laughs> should be called man unkind, because. 90% of everybody's trying to fuck somebody else and it's something they got so that they can have some more and it's not working out too well. It's almost like a loser's game, but can't explain that to anyone that, well, if these people are playing for billions and you're playing for 10 or 100 or even 1,000, what what do you think you're getting for your return? You're you're nothing, and but they've got millions of us in this collective box, right? And the people that have the power are the ones that don't have anything, don't even know how to organize, don't know how to do anything as a group except vote for Trump or vote for Obama or Hillary or whoever the that these people get. They understand the good and the niceness and the wonderfulness of government. Don't seem to ever uh, openly admit that government is such a failure and an embarrassment. It should be abandoned. I don't, I've never, except for Hansel, I don't think I even read much chitter on the internet from other people that, you know, I'm familiar with that have a lot of good stuff to say about the uh, hmm, the state the government is in. Is that way a good way to make a play on words? Because in a lot of ways, their control is blowing up in their face, right? And they're, I don't know, they've got everybody with uh, the split on the guns. They've got you split on what... I'm a toaster, I'm a half man, half cow, whatever the fuck kind of group you want to belong to. So they've used all these things to chop us up into this big mess of little groups that can't see eye to eye on anything. And that's how they actually control what they control, because it's so out of the... The ordinary average day does not involve a banking decision. So... These things are far away from the average man. And then the guy that's working in that shit, trying to scrounge a living out of it, he just plays the game. He don't give a shit what it's about. Who's winning, who's losing, just wants his share. You know, I think I've kind of narrowed it down. to Either you're in it or you're out of it. But it's very difficult to get out, out completely of that... Uh, competitive, I want to be the owner of a trillion dollar business kind of crap. Kind of amazes me that that behavior at this point in life even draws a, a crowd or a, some any kind of attention to it. And it's always based around 10 years from now, tomorrow, the next, you know, next fucking week. And I no, I I don't have all these complaints about living daily life, so hmm, it puts me on a like a different outlook of it all. I choose to do things that other people would find cumbersome and uh, uncomfortable, maybe even strenuous. But I'll give you an off the wall example. I'm half Mexican, and the last thing I want to fucking do is gardening. I hate yard work more than I hate yogurt. I hate yard work more than I hate bacon with yogurt on it. 
covered in pineapple. I still hate yard work even more. But Cirque was doing something, and I figured I'd go out there and whip out my Mexican knowledge and start up that old lawnmower. <laughs> so I've relieved my wife of her lawnmower duties, and I decided to give her a break from it. Because uh, part of the deal me and Cirque have is if something bothers you, okay, and that's one thing, it bothers you. That doesn't mean it bothers me. Now, if something bothers me and it doesn't bother you, well, it's not very nice of me to start telling you to go do something about what bothers me. <laughs> so I, I make a rule of never doing that to Cirque. And because of that, she doesn't tell me, I want you to do that. She never does that nonsense. But like the thing came up and I went, well, if it's gotten my attention, it must need my attention. And I'm out on the thing looking for the cat the other day and uh, smoking a cigarette. And I noticed the yard was a little overgrown and thought, well, that's the first time I ever thought of that. So I better get busy and fix it. <laughs> if it has my attention, it gets my attention. And that's how simple my life is. If, if you're a yard and you need trimming, I'm going to trim you. Well, if you belong to Cirque, maybe. Maybe. Uh-huh, honey. Do I? I don't want to go around to all the neighbors mowing their, their grass. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. But there's so much yard out there. And we're, there were just two of us. We're not going to grow that big of a garden. We're not that independent of um, the uh, commerce of state here in little town we live in. We're pretty dependent on the local, um, what do you, what'd you call it? the local society for sustenance. And every day things always manage to run. And even though the church has held Sunday so holy all these years, they got an outside vendor that doesn't apply, you know, abide by those um, religious laws in their paperwork somewhere, and they're open on Sunday anyway. And it's been like that since I got here. The r main state um, organized, right? I would say that quickly has a lot of state involved in that. Uh, they're more international. There's a lot of variety. They handle a lot of products. So, yeah, it's probably state up, got the state up there, but in there. Then the other stores, kind of like a, I don't know, like a, like a second store, not top quality. But they'll stay open on the holidays, and the religious people won't stay open for. Then I don't even know if anybody here is even religious. The church is always empty whenever I've passed it by. It's a huge building, but doesn't seem to have a crowd. They take nice care of the grounds. It's pretty. I've posted the picture on uh, realliberty.org for my fan club to see, because I think i got like 20 people that keep track of what I do now. And, hey, living in Denmark, it's not uh, exciting like France. Oh, my God. Because you know what happened the other day, right? The terrorists burned down Notre Dame. Who saw that coming? I'll bet you Grimm did. And I'll bet you Rob Works did. And Vinny did. Oh, maybe Mary did. An anti-Java doctor. There's a few folk out there that I would say aren't weren't even surprised by the coincidence of the day that Notre Dame got fire and burned down <laughs> and they're they're destroying our history right in front of our very eyes they build it then they take it down and burn it and get rid of it and in a hundred years who's gonna ever know what it was oh they got pictures I don't know, man. These people are talking about sex bots. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're trying to get rid of the poor. There's so many damn poor. And the only thing the poor have to do for entertainment is fuck. And what does that do? That knocks them up. And some of them, well, they don't really value life, so they get rid of it. <laughs> now we've got this huge national business, abortion. 
And everybody want to get their nose into that and have an opinion and decide and choose and all that or shit. But, you know, to me, it's like, uh, hmm. you kill, you kill. You don't kill, you don't kill. What What difference does it make? What stage of life, whatever you kill is in, if it's, it's alive, then don't kill it. <laughs> Other people got better ideas they can all read the future and they know what's good for you and they tuck you into doing things that are for your own good and of course they get a nice healthy check from uncle sam so you can play their little bank accounting games and use their little cards to do transactions <laughs> and we're all conned into believing this is this is how it's supposed to work because we're in the modern electronic age. What other choice do you have? <laughs> I suppose it depends on what you want to do on the uh, electronic modern age. Because there's there's still ways to live around this electronic modern age. No, there isn't. What am I thinking? For example, if I went to the grocery store and was prepared to pay my grocery bill in currency... But the electric company decided to not work. The cash registers don't open. There, what do you do? They can't do any business. <laughs> so, we're all trapped in this. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a global. It's more like wherever we think we're civilized, we have all these electronic traps that confine and hold us hostage out. Just at will. Whenever they feel like it, they can just break down. <laughs> How do you know it didn't break down? Man, if I was a cashier, I'd have so much fun with people. I'd probably get fired in the first 12 or 13 minutes. But <laughs> sense of humor would ride to the top and I'd do something mean or out of pocket and be asked to not work there anymore quickly, as usual. I don't work well with the public for some reason. I'm more like a wheeler dealer or a craftsman, but not <laughs> I'm not good for the publics. The public eye and me would never see eye to eye. And I say that because when I was in my early 20s, the only job I could find in this one town I lived in was uh, waiting tables in a 24-hour restaurant on the late graveyard shift. It was the only thing anybody could think of. So we figured we'd give it a shot. And it worked for a couple of weeks. And then one night, I had a couple of girls out that were sitting down. And this uh, couple had already been sitting at the table next to them. And the guy says to me something. And I said, I'll be right with you. I'm going to talk to these girls for a, for a second. And he gets all in my face and says, when I say jump boy you say hi and i turned around and said uh no fucking way He's saying that shit come on then the manager took me in the kitchen and fired me for being rude to the customer so and in my food service career but it, it was like three weeks of telling late night jokes to the drunks and having fun but it ended abruptly because well i don't take kindly to people telling me what to do for some reason so I think it was lucky for me that I learned so early in life that service wasn't my area. Don't don't waste your time. But if that's all there is, be willing to do it. And of course, that led me into something else that I ended up doing. But some of the mistakes that I've made like that, I just figure, well, what the hell? It was uh, it was funny at the time. Um, oh yeah, and the last thing to say about that job. <laughs> Before I got fired, well, we had a table, like one table came in, and then there was two, and then three, and four, and all these people all know each other from drinking over the years, and they're all carrying on across the whole freaking area, and they're telling jokes, and they got me into it, and the girl looks at me, and she says, well, waiter, do you know how to satisfy a woman, and the sucker is supposed to say no, and then everybody laughs. And I said, yeah, but I don't get out of here till 8.30. <laughs> Cut her off. And, that, well, that's, I think, 
that guy was in that group and didn't like me because I said that. So he came back again and, well, the rest was <laughs> the end of my history as a weight person. <laughs> Makes me laugh now, but at the time I needed the job. Remember when you were young and you needed work? and Well, maybe not. Everybody didn't travel like that, though. But I was very mobile. So I'd <laughs> spend a couple of months here, pick up and go somewhere else for a while. That went on and on back and forth for most, most of my life, I think. Till, I guess, the last 15 years or so. But now I'm a settled fella, and the control games have got me by the short hairs. But I willingly am involved in that. Uh, I'm not tricked into it. I didn't find out by accident. <laughs> I mean, Cirk talked about the shit and went, well, you want to? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> and then we did it. And I don't know, but... Uh, it seems to me when you tell somebody you're going to do something, you're supposed to do your best that you can to do what you said you were going to do. You know, I think a lot of people have lost, they lost the light on that. The control games took it away. The individual has been lost in the crowd, and the crowd is insane. Look around you. I don't know how anybody could look at the sitting government of whatever bit of dirt they're on. Me, I'm here in crazy old freaking wackadoodle Denmark where the big thing is to burn a Koran in the street to piss off the Arabs for a little fun and entertainment and maybe a bicycle fire. <laughs> the internet, the memes were making it look like they're blowing up a subway or something. I mean the, the train, the underground the subway <laughs> but i seriously I, i'd even hear cirque talk about it until two days afterward and i'm sure if it was violent and bloody and all that my sister-in-law would have been on the phone with cirque telling her eh, we're having riots down here help help but no <laughs> i suppose it's all relative to uh what you're accustomed to you know like uh a couple of people burning a bicycle in the street might be common to the Dane where something common to the American would be, you know, grandma getting arrested for having uh, <laughs> drugs and then 30, 60, 90 days later finding out that it was cotton candy and they had to release her from jail. <laughs> Jeez. But see, it's all, what are you Comfortable with, well, maybe comfortable isn't the right word for it either. Control games. Hey, hmm. My control is kick the shit out of your control any day of the week. You baby, you watch out. Hmm. Now, I'm going to catch up on the chat. They're talking about Big Pharma. Big Pharma is makes more money than we do, my friend. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh. Because, you know, they think Zero De Niro, the drug dealer's making all the money. No. 10% of the drugs that are sold on the black market, or 10% of the drugs sold are from the black market, and the other 9 here are from Big Pharma. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting hosed. I think it's like... One out of ten people might do the illegal drug thing. But the other nine will go to a doctor and say, load me up, baby, and keep me fucked up. I don't want to feel nothing. <laughs> and for the right price, your doctor will give you anything that your little heart desires. You just have to know how to talk, big pharma, to get the right prescription. And we got the internet. So there's um, information and links about. <laughs> well, if it tells you what the results of something are, all you gotta do is mimic the results. And hmm, <laughs> what's a doctor going to do? Doctors are pretty much pill dispensaries. And they will find a, you know, a pill that suits their pocket. Because... <laughs> 
they're getting paid to sell a drug. <laughs> How complicated could this be? And the proof is in the explanations. What was that man's name? I'm going to go through my notes. Dr. John Bergman, I believe, is his name. I'm just going to double check because I screw up names so badly all the damn time. But Mary was talking to me. Dr. John Bergman. Now, the difference between my tale and Dr. John's tale is Dr. John's doctor. See, so people are more impressed with your credentials than your experience. Oh, well, if you're not a Ph.D. and blah, blah, hoochie-wachie, then I ain't listening to you. <laughs> but the con of the whole thing is the information behind everything that we have right now is at best incomplete. At I mean, the very best. My version of it is misdirected. We got shit stuffed down our throat that is so bad for us. <laughs> it's Rockefeller medicine, um, chemotherapy. All right, come on. How hmm, everybody I ever question about any topic in my life has always rolled their freaking eyes at me. I'm kind of used to it. But when you look at the results of a thing and say, hmm. Well, these are the results. How did that happen? Not what what happened. How did the fucking thing get to be the mess it is I'm looking at now? Hannibal, Han, hey, calm down. My dog just wanted to say hello to the RLM chat, probably Grimner in particular. <laughs> I think I heard her say, hey, Grim, hey, Grim. <laughs> nah, that was a, that was a joke. I don't think my dog was talking to you. You're not a dog lover. You, I would not probably have to be Miss Kate or Don C or Vinny, Mary. Oh, maybe Chloe or and well then or <laughs> it's a lot of dog lover. I thought I was a dog lover. You know what I turned out to be? You guys are going to be ashamed of me when you find out. <sighs> I have a cat. <laughs> oh, God damn. Yep. Uh, I'm an old man with a cat. And he's laying here in the chair next to me, sleeping. So, wow. I mean, I don't really understand how this happened. But Cert got the cat fixed and um, had him, I don't know, he was ill. He had some kind of infection. And poor beat up old fucking guy he's been through so much he's a big scrapping well he's not big but he's a scrapping outdoor cat and now he's been beaten into submission grimner says hey hannah <laughs> and now poor dr cooper's been beaten into submission and now in the evening instead of being out prowling around looking for whatever he used to do he's laying on a chair next to an old guy talking on a radio <laughs> so uh, see the results of my exterior tell me how things are going you know how I'm doing is I've got a calm cat sitting right next to me on a chair I don't think I could have done this five years ago I don't think I could have done this two years ago come to think of it but as I get a little older, I think I calm down a little bit more, a little bit more, less anger, more, hey, how you doing, and less, get the fuck out of my way, I gotta get there, I'm in a hurry, blah, 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 fuck all that, man, that hurrying shit, I'm running out of time, and I gotta, and the, uh, and well then, reminding me, in 10 years, the battery car, is, you know, in 10 years, I'm gonna be 70, and if I'm depending on a car at 70, whoa, I done something wrong because there's lots of examples of 70 plus year old men out there in reality land, both being evil and being good, <laughs> both sides of the, you know, the duality to show you that if you want to, 
you can live a long freaking life out there. Just don't get hit by cars or don't shoot yourself in the back of the head with a shotgun and commit suicide, crazy things like that. Avoid those things. And you too can someday grow old. But sadly, it's not part of the control game package that the government sells you. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm afraid the shit the government sells you is, uh, at best, a misdirection of what you could have if, if you didn't trust the government. I think trust in the government is, that's your first mistake. Now, sadly, there's nothing to replace government with because government isn't real. <laughs> it's very difficult to explain this side of this opinion because it sounds so odd, probably. It's not a very commonly spoken topic, but there's a lot of folk on the Real Liberty Media that might see this side of it because of how they live. You know, uh, I live with Circle. Yeah, but me and Cirque are, we're one person in one way, and in another way, we're two different fucking people. <laughs> That's all there is to that. And there's other folk that I've gotten familiar with, like Rob Works and Grimner and Moose Girl. You know, people with families, but things have changed. Like, Moose is not, she's not important to the kids no more. They're grown up, and she got to find something else to do. <laughs> And Grim, he lives out on his own out in New Mexico in an undisclosed location, like Woody. And that that isolation from the big crowd, or the thinning down from you know from three to two to eventually one. That's a lot of shit to go through, and people they don't realize that until it's happening. I don't think, but the because of the way. I watched other people get trained to see that and how differently I see it. Wow, it's not it's it's got both good and bad attached to it, I suppose. But the control games, they want you to dwell on all the negative shit in life so you can be miserable so that you can't open up and draw a better hand. Oh. Uh, probably doesn't make any sense but it goes back to the fear and the love wavelengths that we our emotions live on those wavelengths and if you believe wavelengths are what they are you follow that mentality then you kind of have a, a grip of what i am trying to represent because it's not my idea no 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 i'm just trying to make sense of other people's input that gave me the way to look at this thing and make it so easy to do. I I don't think life is difficult. Life is just life, man. If your life is difficult, you're difficult. There there you go. I want to fight with Sir. I can fight with her anytime I want to. Just what's the point? So I came to the decision in life about arguing with other people in general. It's what I want to do. If I don't want to do it, I don't have to. Ain't nobody making me do it. <laughs> just just because you type shit on an internet page doesn't... That doesn't influence anything. So the reality of life to me is how people treat me nose to nose. And that's been so good for so long. I must sound like a crazy man. Oh yeah, he's all lost his mind. He's out in Denmark. Nobody knows what he's saying. <laughs> He doesn't speak Danish. <laughs> and I guess in the 21st century, you know, because we got internet and all these damn kids, guess what they're doing? They're learning shit on the internet. And you know what? There's words in Dan Danish that don't have a translation, so they got to use the English word. <laughs> so just one more thing for this, these kids to... Uh, to use as a tool to survive in life because that's what it is and i'm not big on uh, languages but there's other people that are i'm not big on believing that society is real but there's a lot of other people that are and you know they'll drive you over with your car if you want to doubt that society isn't real lay down on the street i'll show you how real it isn't 
But that's not how I mean it's not real. <laughs> they, How do you explain to somebody that's so deep-rooted in the physical, touch it, you know, plug it in, turn it on uh, world? It's not as... Um, it's not as complicated as it looks, but it's not as simple as I may try to make it sound. It's it's somewhere in the middle, I think. Because, uh, well, well, where I'm at is, hmm. I've decided if I want to be a miserable fuck, that's me deciding it, not you. <laughs> so, if your input is... Uh, driving me crazy ain't you driving me any damn where <laughs> you're just you're just on the outside i'm looking out of my machine right and i'm seeing the world all around me however i want to see it losing that as the top foremost thought is what i do best i forget all the time i'm in control of what i'm looking at not you <laughs> Uh, you're no more in control of how I see the world than I am in how you see the world. And that's not a good or a bad thing. That's just the thing. That's just the way it really, truly is. But somehow, these um, control games, to me, they've got us all choosing shit that really doesn't mean anything in the end any damn way. But it occupies your time. Let's call them hobbies, because we all have that. Ah, oh, man. See, when well, it goes back to um, people with money, first thing they know, well, if society didn't charge, nobody would do anything. Wow. I'll bet there's nobody on this internet site right now that can type back to me, I love to sit still and do fuck all, nothing at all, for long periods of time. That is how I spend my time. Maybe one out of ten people on the site might say that, and one of them might be lying. So, well, I would give it, there's 37, so I'd say three to four people might even say that as a gag, but one of them's telling a fib. Not that many lazy people. We just, um, we got that inner drive. You got to do something. Oh, whatever it is, it's something. Now, the problem to the something might be the responsibilities that you take on, like me with the gardening. Say, I, I don't like the garden. Fuck, I like overgrowth. I like looking at nature the way nature is, not the way I want nature to be. That's not the real me. Uh, <laughs> I could paint the color, you know, the picture, whatever color I want. It's still, it's not real. It's a picture. <laughs> it's not the tree. It's not the car. It's not the dog. It's, it's a picture of it. And separating that, I don't know, that worked for me. I don't know what I could say to somebody else to make the day just that much easier to deal with. Because knowing the stuff we know is very frustrating. Uh, there's not a lot we can do about what's going badly against us. But I think talking about it openly, um, calling the bad guys the bad guys, even though we might sound a little bizarre to a statist mind, you know, fuck the police. Look at all the bad, horrible shit these guys have done, guys and gals, over many, many years to earn a paycheck. Not, you know, not to protect anybody from anything, but to earn a dollar. Hmm. Now, in my mind, that's no different than the thief that they're supposed to be protecting me from. You know, they do their, th their, their, th 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 they do their thieving with a gun and a pen. It's the same damn thing. But when you bring that to the forefront, Oh, the opposition. Oh, no, the police, they do this. and they No, they don't. Why is it so hard to look at something that's so big that it's out of control and it can't be managed anymore and admit it needs to be broken apart and restructured and done local? You don't need outside freaking federal agents crawling up your ass looking for bank robbers from Chicago. 
That's a bunch of crap. Who travels anymore any fucking way? All that commuting to jobs and shit. Let's dying out any damn way. What what's left? I don't even get how the how do do these people consistently keep the interest of the crowds they have? Or maybe they're not. Maybe they are held hostage. Hey, Grimner says, I am that person, Flash. Doing nothing is my talent. Yeah, I'll remember that the next time I need you to help me do something on the internet. Because I don't know what's going on. Or like the dork table where the Spreaker didn't pick it up. You were all over that. See that? No, that's not what I mean. That's the whole point. Sitting physically does not mean you're idle. There's lots of shit you can do not running around. But I'm. that's my, my premise is that people, they apply themselves to something that they like to do. Like you enjoy doing computer stuff. Now, I'm sure there's times where eh, it's a little bit of a drag here and there, but for the most part, you seem to like the accomplishment of fixing a problem. And like when Spreaker didn't pick up the dork table, you, were, you I checked it twice and three times, and I figured it would pre serve no purpose at all for me to be disappointed and upset about it. Now, I've done 100, 200, I don't know how many dork table po programs. I'm not going to say anything on a dork table that the world can't go without. So, nah. There must have been a reason that particular show. I think it's because me and Moose pissed off the recording gods. <laughs> That's twice. I did a show with Moose and it didn't get to record. <laughs> we we're always getting sabotaged. This is like they're they're trying to keep me and me and Moose off the same radio program. <laughs> so, cuz we agree with each other from way different perspectives of the problem you know different deliveries of the same information i'm a hmm, i'm not sweet and kind and i'm not saying moose isn't but let's just say that moose has the ability to swear like i do and she's not she's not <laughs> quiet about that so I don't know. I but I still think that her uh, her delivery is just different than mine. Some of the points are different. Some of the ideas behind, but the goal. I mean, the, the crust of the whole thing is all the same. Big governments out of control. Weed is illegal. Are you idiots? Con I mean, are, what are you fucking thinking? Uh, hemp is out of you know. There you go. That's out of reach. Why? To this day, they don't even have a mental fucking argument that holds up. Why is hemp, to this day, illegal? Oh, but it's not. There's lots of places. See? Lots of places. But And it just fuels that idea that uh, we need oil. There is so much land on this planet that can grow so much. I've seen a video of a guy that grew grows an underground citrus garden in Nebraska during the winter underground and runs it off the heat of the freaking soil that's around him. It's incredible. So basically, collectively, we do so badly because the bigger things get, the less it can be controlled. And we're, we're taught all everything all backwards. I learned that for myself by living in a small place where I've got to depend on my ability to adjust to them. And, and it turns out that a lot of them are willing to compromise and meet me halfway and not go, Oh, you can't learn how to speak Danish. What's wrong with you? Are you an idiot? Blah, 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 blah. And we all know who does that in America. But here not so much in fact if anything they take a lot of pride in knowing that hey your language at my age is a little more than i'm willing to invest in because i speak so little danish to anybody there you go well 
that's no excuse. <laughs> See, everything, it just matter how you look at something. But, but I still remember foreigners taking the shit end of the stick in America for not speaking or reading or understanding English. Hmm. And then people talk about weird things like karma. and Well, maybe that doesn't fall in the karma thing. Not having respect for language. Because it didn't, it didn't follow me. I didn't ever have a respect for language when I was in America. So I never acquired one. Don't have one today. Doesn't seem to interfere with my daily living. I don't understand why not. Except for the only way I can understand it that makes sense to me is uh, you draw what you put out. You know, if you give people shit, they're going to give you shit right back. That's the nature of the life we live. And this experiment in Denmark thing. Um, wow. I don't know. I guess it just sounds like um, it's not possible. But then again, Cirque was talking about Freetown on uh, RLM on the chat the other day. Now, you got to understand, this is where Cirque lives her whole life. She's grown up in Freetown. And she was telling somebody on the chat what Freetown is about. Now, of course, we're only capable of looking at society in the eyes that we have to see society. So if you've never seen Freetown with your own freaking eyes, I don't think it's possible to really appreciate what a free society truly is or how one operates because it, it opens up all these um, preconceived notions and your whole life experience they've all told you forever oh you can't run a place without a sitting government and formal and tax and do this people don't just volunteer yeah they do and I've been there I spent the first eight months of the time I was in Copenhagen, in and out of Freetown, about one one to two times a week. On a, on a fun week, I'd go twice. And I lived there from uh, March until October. So that period of time walking to Freetown wasn't too awful cold when it was cold. And the rest of the time, it was really nice in the summer. Kind of warm when you think about it, but... Mm. Compared to the desert, nah, it's not even a, it's the, the, what do you call that? Um, it's, it's moist, it's, um, hmm. well, I can't think of the damn word, I just lost, lost it, but it's like muggy, what do you call that? Hmm. But, there you go, it's not a dry heat, it's a wet heat, and at that level, it kind of took a few years to get comfortable to where I'm at now, but. That, see, there again, that is my biggest problem, is uh, adapting to the weather. And this weather isn't even extreme. So, what are, you know, well, I guess the control games that I wanted to talk about on the 20% off kind of went, and I got more into just, you know, how I'm seeing things, and uh, I guess what I plan to do about life in the in the future, because crying out loud, these idiots just burned down Notre Dame. Uh, what's coming, you know, there, and France has been on fire with the yellow vest for a long time, so, I'm not so sure that, um, I don't know what to say specifically about it, I'm not sure what's going on with governments, all I know is that what I see, as coincidental as all this crap can look, humid, thank you, Grimner, good God, man, the, I had a brain fart. <laughs> it just evaporated right out of my memory. That word just went. So thank you for doing that. Oh my God. Uh, but I'm getting old. I'm going to be, you know, I'm hitting the big six zero this year if I live to September, people. Be prepared. I'm bringing guns and lawyers. <laughs> no, I'm not. I wouldn't bring either one of those two to. Sh to a, well, anyway, to a cockfight. Anyway, so I was ranting about Freetown because um, I, I guess 
being in and out of it for eight months out of a period of time I've been here, that's a little bit more than reading about it on the internet. So it gives me an unfair advantage to pick a side in a disagreement or a misunderstanding. And this is shit that I really try to avoid. But in the long run, sometimes um, the voice of experience, maybe that's what this whole radio shit is truly about. Because there's not a lot of people in the world living today that would have my particular life experience, you know, or how I ended up seeing the things that I see the way that I see them now. Uh, a lot of that was already there, but that's just because I was a defiant against everybody kind of guy, you know. I didn't want to be part of your group. If you need a group, what kind of pussy are you in? I had a terrible attitude. So, no, I was never a joiner of things. Well, except the swim team, and when I hit 12 or so, I, that ended pretty much. But, uh, here we are. I'm going to do this this year. I think I mentioned it to Surik. I don't know if I mentioned it on the radio, but I'm going to go back to the swimming pool in the summertime. I haven't been in water in, good Lord, I would say... Uh, since California had a swimming pool in the house, so that was in it a little bit, but I haven't been in water since 2002. Not one swimming pool have I touched, and I've been on the road. <laughs> and the overall, I've been stable, but for there was a lot of traveling in that 17 years. So they say, you know, like you don't forget how to ride a bicycle. No, you don't. You just get on a bike and you do what you've always done unless you, of course you've lost your equilibrium and you're half deaf then you probably shouldn't try that uh but the swimming thing i i don't feel out of shape to where um i'm gonna struggle with it but what you do you when you acclimate you gotta do things in small steps to acquire a uh, a rhythm you know for me now, i don't know about everybody else but when I want to do something, I do it for a few minutes, and then I do it, then I stop, and then I try it the next time. Then whatever the next time is, could be the next hour, could be the next day. But uh, I never overdo any an activity all at once. And the things that would uh, seem to be I'm overdoing, like yard work, now nah, that stuff is really easy to do. It just looks strenuous and uncomfortable <laughs> just got to be smarter than your tools and unfortunately they don't make tools that are simple anymore now they got everything electric because well of course i'm i'm anti-fuel so i'm gonna have to settle for the damn electric which is still oil <laughs> it's the same it's a less intrusive version of the same fucking thing and I blame that on the delivery of the electricity. Check out Larry Woods at uh, Facebook if you got any curiosity about what I harp on that for. Larry's got a great way of explaining how badly the electricity is, re is delivered to us. It's bad. The results are not by accident. <laughs> and these prices are... Wow, that's just a matter of our gullibility as a species. They can convince us and to believe in anything. All they got to do is just hold the line, stay together, and never give in. And as we learned with the Kennedys, after a while, it doesn't matter if you give in and you tell the truth. It doesn't matter. The official story is going to carry over any damn way because it was what was written and. 40 years after an assassination, who gives a shit about the guy that got killed anymore anyway? <laughs> Hold on one second. Anyway, that's my just screwed up kind of perspective on history is I see a lot of people do that too. Well, they know their history inside out, but they weren't there. And the one thing I know from my own personal history is a lot of the people in my life, in my history, who spoke about my history, weren't participating in that particular history. 
<laughs> they were they just knew me and well you know how he is what, what could you expect and that's how life treats us all equally i think that's what we do the dork table for you know cuz we've all been accused of that ah you didn't do that you're making that up yeah i did that because <laughs> Reality to a dork is stranger than it is to a dolt. And the dolts and the dorks have been at war for many, many years. And will probably always be at war. Because that's what dolts want. <laughs> you can't not give them their way. If you don't give them their way, the only alternative is to completely ignore them. And that's... That's kind of depriving yourself of a sick habit if you think it through. <laughs> wow, I'm still com confused. I got lost. I couldn't remember humidity. Mm. Then again, I'm from the desert. And humid. What the hell? I didn't know what humid was until I went to, what was that, Indiana. I think that was the first time I'd ever physically landed in a humid environment. It was Valparaiso, Indiana, 1979. <laughs> Man, that was a humid climate there, let me tell you. I don't want to ever see, look at, pass through, or touch Indiana ever again. And I'm, I, think I, I think I'm holding up on that one. <laughs> I don't think I'll be seeing it too awful soon. Anyway. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Uh, let's see, Grim says to me, you must be getting pretty rank if you haven't been in water that long. <laughs> Swimming pool water, you clown. Oh, uh, yeah, but, um, uh, I, I would just assume that people would have a fear, you know, personal doubts and all that. I just haven't been swimming in a few years. I don't think I'll skip a beat. And in my weird history, I see being in L.A. like, Jeez, like it was just the other day, memory-wise. So, boom, I still remember the swimming pool, swimming in it. And, damn. <laughs> so, as old as I get, the shit that I forget is kind of incidental. Like words or names. Put the wrong name to the wrong face quite a bit. I get... Uh, I'm not celebrity stuck very good, so... They talk about somebody dying or whatever, and I get this guy I'm confused with that guy, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> and then I got the right last name, but the wrong first name, or <laughs> something. It's always something. It's uh, life's little levelers, you know, because when you're too good at everything, people can't stand you. You got to have a flaw. <laughs> if you're not flawed in the 21st century, then you're probably telling everybody a load of shit. You know, because, you know, as much bragging as it must sound like, because I'm comfortable where I'm at in this time in life, I think, wow, that's just the balance of it. Because there's, personally or living-wise, uh, there's so many other ways that just make the playing field level. Like having to face the clock, to get the dog to go to be at the train. And I'm see, I'm so fucking lazy now. I don't want to stand there waiting. I want to time it. So that as I'm walking up, the train's pulling up. She can walk towards me. And if I pass that little crowd of people trying to get the fuck off a train without a dog sniffing their butt. <laughs> now, Hannah grew out of that a while ago, but still. You know, just, you never know. Maybe the temptation to sniff an ass might hit my dog. <laughs> so, I do I do the things in life, you know, according to the clock. And it, <laughs> that's the thing that pisses me off. Not the doing the thing. It's the having to do the thing according to the clock. There you go. If that doesn't explain it to you, then there's probably nothing that would ever make sense. I feel like time is a bully. <laughs> time is a bully and the internet and the media and all this outside shit that we stare at all the time. That's just a way to make you feel bad. 
if you don't have something to feel bad about, look on the internet for a few minutes and you'll find something. People suffer and complain and explain and expose and decipher and, you know, for the good of the population, they give us all this valuable information, you know, because a recent recent survey indicated <laughs> 300 people in Missouri have measles. <laughs> What was my wife teasing me about today? Kansas City isn't in Kansas. It's in Missouri. What the hell kind of country is that? <laughs> because Kansas is a state. Kansas City is on a border of a state. Well, part of it's in a different state. That's kind of why I go, hey, <laughs> this, this state shit's all made up nonsense. And you just... Make the rules suit the story you're telling the people that don't have the intelligence to understand what you're saying in the first place. Dazzle them with fancy jargon that's all legal and schmeagle. Surveys indicate recent uh, research just discovered. They love that shit. <laughs> oh, man. You know, and then <laughs> the other day I was ranting about this. I think it was on the dork. Maybe it was on In a Perfect World. But anyway, <laughs> the Jews for a hundred grand build a robot thing to fly to the moon. A <laughs> hundred grand. <laughs> you can't buy two Cadillacs for a hundred grand. So don't tell me that you're going to build a thing. And then you're going to equip it with a fuel source that's going to fly to the moon. And you're going to do all this on less than, a, well, of course, a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> What's a hundred thousand dollars worth? Four <laughs> percent. You're not going to the moon. But, see, they've got these, um, they've got Hollywood in their pocket. So what they do is they give these people an award for a film. Look at what these fucking wonderful people did, like they did with Al Gore. And they give him some Academy Award. And the rest of the idiots, just because it's all official, they go, Hey, look at this. <laughs> Let's follow him. He knows where he's going. Look at his house. He's rich. He knows stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it works. Oh, Rob Works is uh, doing some ass kissing on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. Got my attention. Took my mind off my rang. <clears throat> I was being brutal to the crowd. Giving them shit about being alive. Because <laughs> that's, you know, the end, that's all this is. We're just alive. And we're in this thing and we talk or type about how it feels. Wow. What the hell does, does that accomplish anything? I don't know. I guess it, it makes me giggle to do the radio. So I do this for personal entertainment and a release valve, if I guess is a way to put it. A chance to communicate in a fashion that makes me giggle, <laughs> or think, or neither. Sometimes I suffer from a lack of either, but not very often. I can usually enjoy myself on a radio podcast. And uh, what time is... Okay, so it's one hour into the... Right? I started at 8 o'clock on this 18th of April 2019. Oh yeah, and speaking of 019s and whatnot... Today is uh, my father's birthday, but he's dead. And then two days from now, my mother-in-law's birthday. But she's not dead. She's still here with us. And uh, she's going to come over and I get to go, Hey, Margaret, happy birthday to you. And I like my mother-in-law. I'm probably fucking it up for all those go-your-own-way guys out there <laughs> in radio land. Yeah, I'm one of those morons that, Likes my wife, likes my wife's family, and uh, hanging out with them is fun. They're kind of interesting people. 
And it's never a dull moment because they still do girly things when they collect in the Flash House. Um, I don't know. I guess the maybe the cultures are different or times have changed or whatever, but we've still got three grown women with cell phones that make their own like uh, cookies or pastries and they make a whole bunch for a whole lot of people all at one time it's a, it's and it's a joint thing or they'll come over and mom wants a new dress and Cirque knows how to sew <laughs> so the two of them and their sister the three of them they gather and they use their collective wit and everybody at the end always leaves oh look at what we made on isn't this wonderful and they're nice to each other so hmm. It's a long way from the battlefields of America where people like to argue and disagree and fight. <sighs> I don't, hmm, I don't, can't really say it's about the two different countries. It's actually the, the person that lives with me isn't insane, <laughs> I think. Uh, because, uh, wow, I guess America just went nuts. The last 15 years of America were, hmm, I guess, what's the right word for it? Pretty disappointing. You know, I saw it decline. And then after I left it, I didn't really pay a lot of attention because I was living somewhere else. But I had the internet so I could watch it from a distance. And yeah, the social decay. And not only in America, but Europe. England, Scotland, uh, I didn't like Copenhagen at the end of the time I was there, and that's turning out to be hmm, quite the interesting little social experiment, if you will, because they got the guy burning the, the Korans for entertainment, and, you know, what kind of response do you think you're going to get when you burn somebody's religious book? It doesn't matter whose book it is. It just see this brand of the religious book gets the sheep to respond in a certain way. <laughs> I wonder what happened. What's that? Um, what is the Jew holy book crap? Well, whatever that. I wonder if you burned one of those in downtown Copenhagen. I wonder what would happen. Israel would probably bomb <laughs> Denmark into the Stone Age. Because, you know, you can be anti-Muslim, but you can't be anti-Semitic. What are you, nuts? We'll bomb you into smithereens. But they say it with a Jewish accent. <laughs> Not like Vinny would say it. I was trying to be funny, but it didn't work. Uh, yeah, Kansas City is in Kansas and Missouri. Right? Or... Uh, well, I don't know the maps. All this, see, all this man-made crap. I always thought there was two parts to it, too. Maybe I'm wrong. Holy shit, Margaret. Can you imagine? Rob, if I was wrong? <laughs> I wonder how many times I've done that. I've lost track of the times I have been wrong. But Van Meter has says, Kansas City sucks. And that's what she has says. And Rob Work says, I'll kiss Donna's ass anytime. <laughs> I don't know what that's got to do with it. Oh, wait, Salamo said that was an awesome segue. Kiss ass, Rob Works. <laughs> you can't get people. That's what I mean is when you're just slapping around, having a good time on the Internet, it's innocent and it's fun. And when people come in to disrupt the flow with argument and disruption eh. they get their rocks off doing that that's what they do it for now you slap assers out there in real liberty that just you know real liberty media.com chat that is that just want to have a little fun on a chat site well i kind of like that part <laughs> anyway i have a strange sense of humor compared to a few folk i suppose Mm. Now, you were supposed to fly over Kansas. Yeah, yeah, okay. Van Meter says yes. Okay, that's the way I remember, but the, I'm 59, and memories from the 70s and the 80s are fading. 
you know, places that I was at briefly for a couple of weeks or a month, I don't remember them so well anymore. And I thought I did remember Kansas City was such a trip because half of Kansas City is in Kansas and the other half is across the river in Missouri. And you go, wow, <laughs> how did they figure out how to do that? You know, in different states. Uh, wait a minute. And then you got St. Paul, Minneapolis. That was a trip. But they're in the same state. So why were they named to... Oh, everybody's got all these weird state things, you know, <laughs> don't even understand how state operates. <clears throat> of course, I believe it's because state doesn't operate worth a shit. We're, we're getting exactly what we're supposed to get. These aren't accidents and mishaps and oops. Oh no. What have we done now? And look at the real, the reality of it. They're putting what? What uh, chemicals, compounds, into the inoculations, into the packaging of these things. Then they shove them in little kids. I mean, where do you need to go to college to know that it, it is insane to put a freaking foreign substance into a two-month-old human body? <laughs> no, you can't be that ignorant. That you don't know, I well, see, I'm a parent, so having that little fragile freaking mutt, you know, you're a hold of them, they're just sitting there, they're, they're blubbering all over their self. They don't do anything for the first about year, really, nine months to a year, depends on how fast you want to raise them, but man, that first nine months is all them, eat, sleep, shit. Learn how to walk. Try not to kill yourself on the tables. Little things. But then, uh, wow, they grow up. <laughs> and, and as we grow up, some part of us gets tough. You know, we get hard. Ooh, Salamo slapped me with a few chunks of dirt. Oh, ouch, ouch. <laughs> And, well, then, disorganizing a religion is one of my favorite hobbies. I don't think that can be done. This stuff is so deep-rooted into people. We're so convinced of uh, the outside forces. Whatever the... F How do you deal with this one? Whatever you see as outside forces, if you believe it, that's true. There you go. doesn't matter what I think about what you think. It matters what you think. <laughs> and when you start arguing about how people feel, <laughs> they confuse feel with think. They don't know there's a difference. I don't. I would use my wife as an example of that because she is completely what she is she's not like me where i can do things to a point and stop cirque's 100 percent all in and i would recognize that as the feelings and the thinking are like tied together somehow they work hand in hand they're not separate you can't cert can't shut her emotion off at a given moment to think through a problem or a thing uh, hmm, what would you say? Like, if a window broke, I would be calm and deal with it. Cirque would react and probably, ah, the window go, you know, blah, 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 something. Me, not so much. I, I would know at that point it's time for, you know, you put this suit on to deal with this situation. <clears throat> now, that is also a, a trait that is, uh, it's not very popular with people. I think they attribute that kind of thinking to being a sociopath. Ooh, you must be evil. And No, it, I'm just referring to it in times of when something desperate happens, somebody has to keep their composure about them. And it's not a phony thing. That's, I've known other people that can do it as well. And then there's folks like Vinny that are... I will bring up Vinny on this show. But Vinny's got a... a I don't know. He's got like a Jekyll and Hyde to him to me. 
and he plays so much people play back and he forgets i don't think he i think he forgets most of this stuff is just nonsense every once in a while i get him mad at me <laughs> cuz i say things that go too far that's why i use vinny cuz you guys have heard me and vinny go at it on the radio <laughs> you've seen us go at it in type and in the end we're we're always friends because whatever that was about <laughs> in the end it didn't have much to do with the other guy. It was just I was handy and and <laughs> or he was handy and and I used him for that moment to throw words at. I would suppose, and somehow or another we've been convinced that uh, disagreements and all these word games that we all play on the internet should affect the friendship. And I, me and Vinny talked about that, and uh, somehow or another. Uh, whatever problem there is, it's always your problem, ain't my problem. If I have a problem, how can you have a problem? No, 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 no. That's not what we decided. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is if two people are in a disagreement, it's because one of them wants to be in that disagreement. Uh, Hansel offered me a long time ago. He's so, I'll get down off this and I'll back off if you do and compromise. And I said, no, I don't want to be your friend. No, I'd rather not get along with you than get along with you. So I made my choice. That was that. End of story. Vinny's not that cut of um, personality on the Internet. and We've become, I guess, friends over the years and see each other differently because of it. And, and some of the stuff people say to each other on the internet is so fucking cruel. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm laughing at it. That's my nervous laugh because it's an uncomfortable topic. But I'm using Vinny because me and Vinny have done it. I, I'm not third, you know, third story in him. <laughs> this is my experience with him. <clears throat> and I, I consider Vinny very honest so uh, me bringing it up on the radio shouldn't piss him off or get him upset because he's not here to hear it but <clears throat> anyway uh the ability to shut things down and look at reality and deal with it uh, accordingly not subjectively not objectively but accordingly and different things <laughs> they they require a different suit for that particular problem and man people some people they've got their thinking attached to the way they feel about something and they can't separate the two there's that's where um my decision came from to do with hansel what i've done no thank you and not being wishy-washy and going back ain't gonna happen no 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 this uh this mess was created long ago, and it serves a purpose, too. Um, who was it? People, I think it was Mary. Mary that's talked about, uh, and Vincent, that it's good to see the opposition to your stand. <laughs> the problem with the opposition is it's all typing and links from Fox News and <laughs> crap about trump or this this lawyer or that fbi agent no 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 that's not what i'm interested in i don't give two flying squat alinis about donald j trump me and trump are never going to cross paths nothing that he does is going to directly affect me in my lifetime unless he declares war on Denmark or something and bombs us but I don't think so I think the queen of Denmark trumps Donald Trump in the overall game but we're the public people and we're so misled about the hierarchy and how things operate and how they work and I'm going to prove that by saying we're still burning oil <laughs> we're always going to burn oil as long as we're here they're going to find ways to keep us slaves to their oil <laughs> no matter what they'll give up a little here and they'll give up a little there they even came out and told people oh, okay they're not fossil fuels it's a renewable <laughs> another scam you've been hustled one more time but what they 
they don't even lie about the filth and the the waste. The nasty side of oil is right there in front of everybody's face to see. And the only alternative that we have as a species at this point in time is to go full tilt, <laughs> debt, <laughs> double down on the debt, and let's burn hemp instead. <laughs> the end result it, it it justifies the action because the pollutants they <laughs> minimize by such a dramatic change that things would actually show a progress you'd see things clean up <laughs> but we don't want that we want electricity <laughs> oh well because the collective i don't think the collective's aware that the electricity is delivered on a service that provides you with garbage results on purpose so that more profit can be earned by these thieves <laughs> they're they're lying to us with every breath they got they're trading by the five biggest banks on the planet five trillion dollars every day that's how much they're trading <laughs> but yet the world debt is what so, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of stuck on stupid now because the loop of the financial things, is, it's a scam. The political thing's a scam. The energy thing, every fucking thing that we know is nonsense. They, they got people convinced that they've been to the moon three times. And here, three different entities accomplished the miracle, the absolute fucking miracle of flying to the moon. And you know what not one of these fuckers will do? Take a picture of me on top of my roof going, hey, are you on the moon? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Just one picture of Earth from a camera that they send out into space. How could it be possible with all this technology that we got right now, that nothing ever comes of this. I've seen YouTube people go up and, you know, give a good good performance of proving the curvature. But then again, the cameras and the this and the that, and the, the lack of exposure it got left me wondering. So we're back to the round flat thing. <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it is it so shameful? Hmm, maybe that's what it is. Is it's a it's a matter of shame to admit at this point in time in life that I don't have a clue what's going on around me at all. <laughs> I either take other people's word for things or I don't. One or the other. There's no middle ground. But well, on the other hand, everything I've ever read turned out to be that's not true. Hmm. Now, holding that opinion, you may not have that opinion about what you've read. You may be one of those people that believes the official story about certain historical events that took place and people took camera pictures and video pictures and picture pictures and they interviewed stand people that were there and put it on the news for everybody to see. Well, then how can you not see the performance that that always turns out to be time after freaking time? It was so easy to uh, be convinced for me that 9-11 wasn't what the the government was telling me because I'd been through that show so many times before with other uh, disasters. Well, mostly Kennedy's. Then when they picked apart the films and they showed you what they had as evidence, then somebody else with better equipment came along and said, no, that's not true. I've seen everything stripped down to uh, nothing, even including the Oswald assassination. That has its doubts. The people are saying that possibly is a fraud, too. <laughs> I don't know. Jack Ruby was supposed to die of cancer in prison oh, yeah, yeah. all these names and all these faces and all these stories we hear and then no matter what you believe you're going to find somebody out there if you look or listen long enough 
that will say that's not true and i can show you how that's not true and then then they do they show you how what you're looking at that's not true <laughs> it was made up wow <clears throat> so at 20 percent off i'm left in the in the hands of the control game you know, because if I go against what everybody else believes, I'm the nut job in the room that doesn't know what's really happening in life. And I live in my own little fantasy world. And as Beetle would say, do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm reading the chat. <laughs> How appropriate. And we're out of sync on the chat and the radio. So I don't know if he's listening or not. I've just been mumbling and jumbling tonight about how I feel about the uh, control games that we're all participating in and what they may or may not truly be. Uh, I, it's, in my opinion, it's all backed up by your belief system. And <clears throat> there's not like a, a consensus of opinion where everybody agrees with everybody on the RLM. Now, my opinion of the RLM is there's a lot of individual thinkers that agree on a few things, and on the other stuff, they're so obviously in their own way that they sometimes think they're arguing with the other guy, and they're really not. They're talking about the same thing from two different perspectives. And if you look at it from the right angle, sometimes I can see where the similarities are. Because we all know how to separate all the differences. Oh, this is so different from that and so on. But finding the similarities in life, I've been putting more attention on that. I mean, like, uh, the marriage is definitely based on opposites. You know, you got your cough, cough. Whoa, baby. You've got your obvious male and female and, and Danish and American, you know, the age thing, all the, all the trappings of the physical life are all set up so that me and Cirque would be so different. And we're not, I mean, we are opposite in a lot of ways, but still that core thinking about the world around us that so few people share, they call it anarchism. And then anarchism was hijacked by the, you know, media and the press and all these other entities and misrepresented as some kind of chaotic shit that brings death and destruction. No, that's the situation that we live in that does that. And then America's got that military just going around pounding every third rate two-bit fucking hustler on the planet, they're going to take them out with their trillion-dollar war machine. How much did they spend? Six trillion dollars in a year? I think Grim was talking about that on uh, Grim Leftovers. <laughs> I might be wrong. It might have been the Freaker's Ball, but I think it was a Grim thing. Six trillion dollars to spread all this, you know, peace and love all over the planet for everybody to enjoy. And they got a, they got a huge following of violent, uh, control freak wackadoodles that are more concerned about what's going on in Notre Dame than they are in Freddy Town, where they actually are. <laughs> so I've tried to not become consumed by you know what what's going on in the states or France or wherever is all that's happening. Sure. But it doesn't involve me. And on, on top of that, the things that I, I believe involve me, like having the knowledge about the vaccinations and watching these big corporations try to shut everybody up that's talking the truth about it because big pharma's making a killing off of maiming and crippling the population. You know, and they're going to have robots and... Um, whatever else to do all the physical shit so they don't need us anymore so at the rate they're gone they're just going to breed us out of uh, <laughs> breed us out of existence well it kind of looks like that hold on whoa <coughs> 
Ah. I enjoyed that tremendously. Sorry about that, folks. But, yeah, it's no secret I pretend to smoke marijuana when I do radio programs. <laughs> Transmutation. To some, it's scary unless you understand life and death is temporary. Just cycles, man. And that's what I mean, Donna. Whatever your mind believes doesn't have anything to do with me at all. I'm just reading your opinion about something I have an opinion about. There's actually, to me, there's no collective about that. There's a collective to inoculations. <laughs> There's a collective to Federal Reserve banking practices that we live under. There's a fucking collective for this um, Donald Trump bullshit. Because the people are not really aware that the government is nothing more than business running around calling itself government. It's corporations. They lobby. They openly bribe each other right in front of the public. Yeah, they call it lobbying now. Wow. And then they explain it with all this. Well, lawyers go in. The lawyers go in there and do what? They write a freaking law in a language we don't understand to perform what? What task are they performing? Misdirection and control. But we're taught to call it law. <laughs> There's so many laws on the books, and I guess they got to keep all these freaking lawyers busy. And instead of starving a beast, human life forms of the carbon-based nature seem to lean toward fueling a beast. That's uh, that's what we do best, you know. Like with the upgrades in the in this uh, neighborhood down the road. Took the time to walk down and see what they're replacing and what's going on and with my own eyes, not just imagining I know. And with my little bit of knowledge of construction, I figured out what they're replacing and wow, they're upgrading stuff and then we're moving up in the world and it's all underground and not above ground so getting it can be destroyed by a natural disaster. They're not known for earthquakes up here, but hey, <laughs> we're waiting. Anything can happen. <clears throat> Let's see. Hmm. Ooh, Beetle is ignoring the world. I don't blame you. Take a day off. But you're online, so you, you're making me crazy. Hmm. <clears throat> yes, Miss Mary says, I like to think of it as an amusement park. Lots of rides. Some we go on again and again, even when lines are long because they were worth the wait. <laughs> yeah, Disney World. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Disneyland all the way monorail system. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in that shit. <coughs> now, now I shy away from Ah, wait, I had a moment today. I was thinking, I don't know how many years I'm going to last walking. So, maybe eventually I'll I'll settle down and get a bike. <laughs> and then they got those cool bikes with the cart in the front of the bike. So, you got your one wheel, oh, elixir, bless you, honey. Uh, so, you get the, the bike with the box on top of the wheels in the front and the one wheel you're sitting on, you know, behind you. And I, I'm looking at that. I think I saw somebody riding one today and it just caught my attention. And like I said in the beginning, you know, if it has my attention, it must require it. So, I'm going to pay attention. And I started to think, well, you know, I'm still walking okay. So far, so good. But I'm not that old. But still, down the road and... Uh, swimming is going to keep my legs in shape and this, that, and the walking. And eventually, if I continue to walk, I'm going to eventually get a bike <laughs> instead of a car. So, yeah, um, and well then, I, it might seem like arguing of it. No, I'm such a... Uh, I'm so stuck on my stand, and I really live up to it as much as possible, that never again do I want to be driving a car. 
for no reason any freaking where. I don't care if I never go anywhere again. This little place where I'm at is paradise at the end of my life, you know. Forty years ago, I would have blown through this place in four days and never looked back. No, there was a retirement village for old people and teenagers. No, 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 I don't want to live there. Where's the action at? And now I'm old, so hey, guess what? <laughs> I found a nice retirement village to wither away in, and I'm not willing to wither. But I guess I could. See, that's why I'm... St- I'm so adamant about being repetitious and constantly telling people, I believe this is all what I want it to be. Therefore, I make up my mind. I don't see anybody else making up my mind telling me anything. They got opinions. I will use um. (laughs) <laughs> I am that old Grim. Yeah, I'm 59. I'll be 60 in September. I'm I'm looking forward to it though. I'm not so uh, afraid of all this old age crap. I'm just rolling with it. And I just wonder, you know, when when you see somebody my age walking down the street like a 40-year-old, I wonder if that makes any does that translate to the person looking on or do they still because I've got gray facial hair you know do they still see some old geezer walking I don't know I don't have the ability to see what you see I only got the ability to be it (laughs) don't I don't make half the decisions about me I'd like to make I know I could I suppose but I'd have to put all that attention and awareness on those things and other things have my attention that I can't seem to to um, pay attention to these things and then me at the same time. Something has to give. <laughs> so I spend an incredible amount of time living on autopilot where I'm not trying to control what I'm doing. And that's what I'm saying is if I could stay aware of I'm in control... I could even get more things to go the way that I want them to, the way that I look at life. I'm just not that greedy. I'm satisfied. Things are fine. (laughs) They're not too fast. They're not too slow. And uh, like Cirque wanted to do something with the, um, the patio today. And I didn't feel like it. So she just did what she wanted to do and called me out for the dangerous or the stuff that might fall kind of thing and yeah oh hey i would rather do that for her than have her have an accident so that's common sense in the household but you know there's just some uh, some people just don't have the ability to hear no they take it so personal you know like wow you won't do that no i'll do it but i don't want to do it right now now I met a partner that can accept that kind of behavior from their partner, and it's very rare. And, of course, whatever, you know, I expect from, like, Vinny on the radio. He's my radio partner, even though he says he's not. (laughs) But I expect a certain whatever from Vinny, so I try to give it to him. And we narrowed it down to the problem with society and the problem with communication is we got, like people like me, a whole lot of people have a lot to say. But the people that they're talking to, some of them don't really understand what they're hearing. They're hearing it on a indoctrinated level of state that doesn't allow that knowledge to hit them. And it, there's no nice way to say it. I know it sounds pompous. I mean, geez, there's that guy on youtube the pompous guy with the magnetism wow what a mind he's incredible and he's full of himself and he knows it and it's uh it's okay now me i'm kind of like lean the other way i think i i think a ton of shit you know and i've got a a motherboard full of opinions but i can't prove any of it i can only tell you my version of what i'm looking at you know, and then uh, I see this entity I call government a total fraud, total waste of time, total letdown. Whatever these people want you to do is not good for you. 
History has proven it time after freaking time after time. Doesn't matter which piece of shit they put in what suit sit in that fucking White House. You're getting screwed by other people. <laughs> I don't care how many tax breaks he gives the rich that trickle down to the middle class. That is not what matters to me. The prick is still bombing Syria, fucker. You know, all this talk, oh yeah, they're going to get this guy in and there won't be so much war. Bullshit. Anyway, to those of you out there in the real world that hold that idea, you're welcome. I hold it too. You're not alone. I just know there's not a lot of you. And my goal is not to gather and face the evil that men do. My goal is to not have everybody on the fucking planet get brainwashed into believing the bullshit that we're fed. Like, hemp is bad for you. and Cannabis is the devil's lettuce. And uh, the death penalty will solve crime. <laughs> you know what would solve crime? Raising better... People would solve crime. We're raised to do the things that we do to each other. We're rewarded for it. Uh, we're everything that's bad for us is what they praise. What? Who got a Obama got a damn uh, what was it? Nobel Peace Prize? The warmonger motherfucker. <laughs> Peace Prize Nobel. A motherfucking murderer giving another murderer a motherfucking prize for being a peace guy. <laughs> it's a scam. Oh, man. And who do you tell? <laughs> the educated, they don't listen to us wackadoodles that talk a bunch of lies about their precious system that works so well for the good of all. Jeez. D do so few people actually see the hypocrisy that we face daily? It's constant. It's in our face. And nobody will move. Everybody's going to fight. I'm going to fight you to the death. I'm going to hold my ground. Well, you know, I lost that illusion years and years before it could even become an illusion to have. <laughs> Give two fucks about the bit of dirt. It's got nothing to do with it. That is the illusion to bind you to it so that you'll belong to it. Now, I did that with Cirque, but Cirque's happy. So I'm not suffering as a result of being bound to this bit of dirt. My wife loves her little life in Denmark. So there you go. Now, if I was with a woman that didn't, I don't think I would say the things that I say. <laughs> there you go. So I'm living in la-la land in a decent marriage in the 21st century. And it's got to sound like, no, <laughs> you're out of your fucking mind, mister. Nobody thinks like that. Yeah, well, that's the results I kind of expect. Anyway, if I don't get them, I'm surprised. Hey, Hannibal. Hannibal and the doctor are at my feet messing around. So if I abruptly get bumped off the internet, it's because the, the dog and the cat decided to take the computer down with them. They're roughhousing. Okay, you guys. Hey, wait, let me pause a minute. I'm sorry, folks. Thank you for your patience. Sorry about the yelling. I thought I paused and I missed it. But, yeah, I have a, I have a cat. I'm a cat man. And I'll close the show with my cat man story. But yeah, I woke up the other day. And the doctor, since he's been back from the vet, every day I see him. And uh, I think I locked him out at night or something or I missed him. But he was gone for a whole day. And I was like, wait a minute, where's my cat? <laughs> so I've become the cat man of the RLM crew. Wow. By, by uh, choice. The cat kidnapped me and... I just accept it. Uh, I wouldn't have believed it if I would have been told I'm going to be sitting on the radio and my cat is going to be sitting on my feet acting like a cat. I would have thought you're out of your mind. But it's happening. So <laughs> if you've been following the you know, 20% off in the control games, 
Uh, the control life that I live is by design because I knew it was coming. You know, uh, I'm not disappointed in life. Life doesn't irritate me. Uh, I'm not in an incredible, incredible amount of physical pain because of medical problems. None of that stuff. Life really turned out really good. <clears throat> and I've convinced myself in my mind that it's a mindset. And I can lose it as easily as I got it. If I want to. See, it's all in your head. Anyway, <clears throat> I guess that sounds more than 20% off the normal 20% off than usual. But if it works for me, now I don't know how to share that with somebody else. You know, what is success? Frame of mind, right? Um, there's some things in life that are obviously not recognized as success. So you just wipe that stuff off the table. But the mishaps and the little, you know, the inconveniences that come up in my life are so minuscule. I haven't been bedridden a day since the beginning when I switched over from <laughs> from greasy meat to vegetables. That was a tough couple of days. I got to admit that. The body was not prepared for that shock and uh I probably handled it wrong. I did it too quickly. That's usually when uh, when I change something and it doesn't work smoothly. It's a big, you know, mess. It's usually because I didn't do it in small enough increments and work up to it. Older age has taught me, said, hey, I said easily. Yeah, but Vinny, old age has taught me to slow down in some areas and go faster in others. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> I, got a, I got a yes dear from the wife anyway I don't know I was I was mistaken and well then we're going to disagree in the chat room about really unimportant topics in the long run it's just my opinion about what you see the way you tell me and if that holds any weight, don't let it. <laughs> that's that's the lesson to learn on chat rooms is so you disagree about something, so what? The reality is still going to be the reality. The difference is, is you live in your reality and I live in mine and the social um, society around you dictates differences. And as insane as that may sound, even though societies are all operated the same, they bring different results depending on their uh, the population and what you fuel your society with. And the thing like with labeling GMOs and all that kind of thing, they really do that here. I'm convinced of it because if, if GMOs were supposedly bad... And I've been getting lied to about not using them because my Danish family has insisted that I use the organic products. And they mark them so that you know when you're buying them. These are organic products, which breaks down to they weren't fucked with by Monsanto in some way that we can prove. Doesn't mean they weren't. But the ment the mentality, you know, the state of mind that I'm in where I feel good, that must have something to do with um, what I actually use for fuel to get through the day, you know, because it's my mind that's in control of everything, and the body's the machine that does the physical shit, but everything is controlled by your brain, How, whatever the way that works out, your mind, your thinking process, but your physical, physical shit, just, that's a result of what you think. <laughs> you don't just physically do stuff. That there, well, there's something like your blood replaces itself, whatnot. I'm talking about the big things in life don't just happen. You have to do them. But thinking about doing them, that's part of it. It's not all of it. There's so much more than just being on the wavelength. And maybe that's what all this radio and introducing everybody to each other to find a way to understand it that suits the person. You, 
because Mario is real big about saying there's no one size fits all. No, that's absolutely the point. But we've can we've been convinced as a collective that that's exactly what there is. This one thing works for everybody, and no, one thing doesn't work for everybody. It's never going to. It never has. But they're going to carry the lie as long as they can. So. You either do what we do and you get on the radio and bitch and banter and tell your side and give people your opinion, or you don't. And if you don't, well, then you must be happy with the way things are. And my hat is off to my fellow happy with the way things are people in the world. You all know who you are. And just because you're having a bad day at work doesn't mean your life is miserable. Right, Miss Mary? I'm talking about... You know, the person that you are is the person you are. And we interpret it on the internet chat from the way we read other people's words. And it's a never-ending ball of fun and excitement for the kids and the family around. Thanks a lot for hanging out on 20% this week on this 18th of April, 2019. And a special thanks to my buddy Grim for putting us out there in the uh, out there in the world wherever they pick up the show, whoever might pick up the show. It's fun to do the radio, and it's nice to get an opportunity to do a, pro- a program that's not all about negative, crappy, crappy, crappy all the time. So I I feel it's kind of uh, it's nice to be able to talk good about my fellow human carbon life based forms and the society that i f- you know physically in- entail and then there's the internet world where things are all fucked up so coming up on the schedule gramsy does on wednesday and friday at seven o'clock on the east coast she does her rocket chair podcast live from kansas where the land is large and the police are small and then grimner and moose girl moose girl and grimner i don't know if he's doing a balls to the wall that might have been last week i don't think i picked up the show yet this week i'm not sure if um moose uh, moose can tell me but it'll be 30 seconds too late if you're doing a Freaker's Ball with Grimner this week on Friday night. I'll pick back up and look for the answer to that and make sure I didn't screw it up. And before all that fun and adventure, you got Vincent doing... Uh, I Yeah. <laughs> oh, you caught the end. Thanks, Vinny. <laughs> and I just caught my error at 1 o'clock on Friday on the Real Liberty Media will be my buddy Vinny doing uh, In a Ponder Gander. You doing the Ponder Gander on Friday? Or I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be. Then Grammy, then Moose and Grimm. And then Saturday I do a dork table. uh, Noon Eastern time from Denmark. Sometimes with hostage, sometimes hostageless. Oh, thank you, Van Meter. I appreciate that. I have no idea. I just like to tell stories and do crazy voices and uh, maybe be one of the people in the world that isn't always on the downside of everything. You know, hell, life. If life always sucked, why would we bother to do it for 50 fucking odd years? No, life's good. And there's there's a group of people that just want to take that away from you. You know, and they have to be stopped. And you, if you can't stop them in a group, stop them in, you know, on your own level at some way. And knowing they're there is a big help. Then, Sunday morning, Grimner comes on and plays the blues until trivia. And then all the brainiacs get together and beat your ass at trivia. Hal Anthony comes on at 3 o'clock on the West Coast out there in uh, USA with behind the woodshed and does a little cricket chirping and talking and such about things that really matter. And then Monday night, seven o'clock on the East Coast, we got Grim Leftovers from the Freaker's Ball. Whatever he didn't have time for, and sometimes things he just feels like talking about. <laughs> it's quite the show. I really got a kick out of this. I, I hope Grim doesn't give up doing the uh, the leftovers. 
Uh, the news thing, he got bored of that, but I don't think the I don't think the way he's doing this bores him. He seems real real happy to do it. So keep it up, Mister Grimner. And then uh, Tuesday night, I come back sometimes with Vinny, sometimes no Vinny. On in a perfect world where we debate the color blue and who owns it. And then back to Grammy on Wednesday at seven o'clock. Uh, flying in a rocket podcast rocket chair podcast and then i come back this time next week with another wackadoodle episode of 20 percent off and uh that should do it so anyway uh really had a good time tonight just reminiscing my past and talking about how i see this crazy old world you know and there's got to be people out there that know it. it's it's 90% of this whole thing is just what you think and the rest of it might be real or may not <laughs> have fun with that concept and I will catch y'all if you show back up next week thanks a lot everybody Roger Wilco over and